What's good, y'all? It's my review for this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Golden winning, me, bro. Once again, another fantastic episode. Rocky once again shows you why he is the master of suspense. Legit. This was some shit straight out of fucking John Carpenter's The Thing. We'll just talk about that again. Also, guys, before we jump right in, you saw. I gotta say, I'm sorry about the reactions for the last two episodes. It took so long. I don't even know how I forgot about the reaction from two weeks ago when I was working on. The reaction for the last week's episode, I don't even know how that happened. But whatever. Um, so yeah, the review for this web, the, the reaction for this episode will should come out in the next couple of days, if not today. Uh, depending on how I when I get this review done, because we got the NBA Finals today, as well as TakeOver 31. So, you know, if it ends up not coming out until Monday, you guys know why that is. Anyway, without further ado, let's just jump right into this episode. So we started this episode off where we left off last week. Well, actually, we started off with Dopio, as, he's, as I guess he's actually bleeding out. Now, I find this kind of strange because, I, if correct me if I'm wrong, Misa said that, oh, he didn't hit anything vital, he'll live. But here it seems like be, like Dopio is dying. So maybe Misa lied? I don't know. But, or maybe he didn't hit something vital and actually didn't need to. I don't know. Regardless of such, we have him see, like, he's like, so, so that's where you're now residing, boss. Uh, and, you know, he's, like, slowly dying, and then we actually see, um, um, Dopio's like spirit, I guess you could say, right a little above uh, Busarati's body, as they're kind of looking at the. F and, he, and also, by the way, notice that tr that tr Trish, well, Trish inside of Mista's body is like the last person, is like the last person behind everyone. She's like the last one while everyone's running ahead. So keep that in mind. Because I actually didn't notice this when I first watched the episode. Um, but anyway, so he's like looking at the phone. He's like, boss. It would mean the world to me. As their like voices slowly start to like dis to, to um, first they start to like 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 fuse together. Where you can hear both uh, Dopio's body and Butterati's voice, but very, but later on you can just hear uh, uh, Dopio's voice, where he's like, I, "It would mean the world to me if you would call just one last time." And so after that, we're back to with we're back with everybody else, or well, then we fast forward back to where we were last week with with um, with. Um, Paul the ref grabbing the arrow and everyone just sprinting right towards him. So, so he like picks the, he like picks, he tells me, you know, impale your stand with the arrow, this and that, third. So anyway, so then, anyway, silver chaired Wequiem is charging right towards uh, Paul the ref. Mista goes and fires off a shot from his revolver, but guess what? The chamber, or whatever that place, the place where they keep the bullet, where the bullets are and they rotate, just falls off. It broke. Yes, Mista's revolver broke after what? Four after how long is L part five in there? Was it like thirty five episodes, thirty six episodes we're at now? I believe so it's like thirty six episodes. Yeah, like thirty six episodes is when he finally when his is when his gun finally bites the dust. <laughs> Another JoJo reference. You're welcome. Um, so he's like, "What the hell?" And then after that, and everyone's like kind of like freaking out for a second. But then he pulls out, but then he pulls out his Beretta and fires a fires some caps in him in his face, which keeps him down for at least a little bit. And he's obviously screaming to his bullets, "What the hell, bullets? Why didn't you tell me my revolver was, you know, in this bad of shape?" This, that, and third. And number five mentions like, "What if it was the boss?" And 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 me, and me's like, "Oh," but then I want to say it was number one. Goes there be like, you idiot, think before you speak to you. There's nothing in here but fucking air. How could the boss even get close to us? Oh, how, oh, how right number five was. <laughs> so anyway, so they argue for a bit. Anyway, they like kind of like reload. Anyway, he goes back, he starts to get up again. Uh, Mista grabs a pole rev and they start charging him again. He fires the shots at more. And, you know, the things like, take, I think he like got rid of like his arm or his leg. Anyway, he like bounces off from that and still continues and still pushes forward. So anyway, so he still pushes forward. And so, so like at this point, he's just now running away from him. He's like, shit, shit, shit. He's, he's telling him fools to reload, but he's like, it's a Beretta. You have to reload the magazine. It's going to take us a little longer to get in. Because it's not revolving, they can't just sing in there. You got to, you know, unload the mag, put it back in, pull back the chamber, I think. Um, yeah, so yeah, pull back the chamber and all that shit. So yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer for both to get in there when you're using a Beretta. <laughs> I found it kind of humorous that he was, it was actually, funny story, I've actually been rewatching a lot of uh, the Trapped in the Closet series from R. Kelly. 
Um, first off, um, Tribulant was actually doing like some Fire Emblem, uh, Fire Emblem, like a few weeks back, maybe even a month ago. And you know, he has like this, he has like this little playlist he plays because you know the game isn't really that many boys, so he just wants to play it there just because. Why not? And one time we had this one from our college playoff, and then you know we start talking about the trapped in the closet. I rewatched the entire. First off, I rewatched the entire series, and now I've been rewatching a couple of handful of chapters. I just really like those chapters. <laughs> and I just remember what he says in the first. He says, "I pull out he looks in the closet. I pull out my Beretta." <laughs> but anyway, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's running over there. Silver chair is right on his tail. Polar is like mere inches away from Polar. And he's like, it's no use. But then Trish, like AD's buzzer beater in game three, in game two of the Western Semis and the Western Conference Finals, Amista swings on, swings onto like this little lamp post or whatever, and climbs up there, just barely missing uh, Silver Chariot's head. And so he's up there, and he's thinking he's in the clear. He's telling everyone to go along. He's got to throw the turtle, but before he can, something comes out of the lamp post. And takes on a turtle, making it crash to the floor. So then, Silver Chair roughly puts his arm back in there, grabs the arrow, and is back on his merry way. And so at first we thought that maybe, oh shit, did he kill a Pongler? But I think I might even tweet that out, that it's Pongler of Death. And I, or I was hoping that it wouldn't kill off Pongler Rep too, because I feel like there's enough deaths in this series. Although we might have another one given the ending of this episode, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Anyway. So we get, oh, so anyway, he gets, so anyway, they get, so anyway, he like, they start to like go away, they start to go away, and then they kind of go back and kind of regroup for a moment. Paul the ref is indeed fine, but he figures out what's going on, and why he is acting, and why, you know, he just left them. And that's because he knows what his true plans are, and it says that we are, and he says, and they're like, what is it? It's the fall, and Paul the ref says it's the fall before your very eyes. We find out that he's been the man that actually started to mutate. And there's a mutation now, like, but like, I don't know what, this, I, I even tweeted this out, this, this looks like some shit out of Alien. Looks like it wasn't that half wrong with the horror references. <laughs> but, but this head in a claw thing comes right out of his arm, or right next to his head, out of his shell, and yeah, it's kind of freaky. And then we see some other people start getting mutations, and then pretty much we find out what, so, what their, the master plan is, is to pretty much just, you know, completely mutate humanity or whatever. You know, this is the, just the first stage until we completely do um, mutate. And then we have to see the boss. He's like, Fascinating. And now I know. So that is what you are planning. Mm. Grazie. And you know, he's like thinking like, Oh yes, this is going just according to plan. You know, the boss is all happy with this new change of events. So they grab the turtle and their back changes towards um, to Silver Cherry. Rep. And, and we get back to the boss. Yes, yes, you fools. Charge right towards them. <laughs> but then, Jorno, and but then, you know, as they're charging, but as they're charging, it's all so motion everything. Jorno tells everybody to freeze and to not move a muscle and keep everyone distant from each other, which they do. And so they're wondering, like, what's going on? Mixa tries to go ahead, but Jorno tells him again, stop. And like I said, this is when it becomes John Carpenter's The Thing. So, so Jorno is going. So Jorno f is talking about how he figured he took a close look at the gun, and it doesn't look like it that that the piece doesn't fit, and that most likely that something would have happened to the gun if it wasn't metal fatigue or whatever. And Mista's like, "Oh, please, you! That we're we're running out of time. We can't waste time. We're losing the deal. Requiem. We have to go." If the bullet said it was. If the bullet said that it was metal fatigue, that's what it is. No one else was there. How could anyone have gotten it? Then. He starts to think that there might be somebody that the boss might, and he also mentions that he'll, and I think one of the bullets might have mentioned that piece might be missing from his gun, uh, from the gun, which then he actually like like gave piece of the gun life and it became a mole, and so he brought back the piece back to him to figure out where it was, and it doesn't it still doesn't look like it fits. I'm not sure if it was supposed to or not. Didn't really know I was looking at it in that one shot, but anyway, but anyway after that it's like. But anyway, so he figures out that maybe that the that the boss might be might be inhibited, might be inheriting, it might be be in some in one of our souls, or it might be in, his soul might be in one of their bodies. Is what I meant to say because Trish can't sense it, so most likely he might be there. And so then, and so like I said, this is when it starts to come John Connor's fingers. We're trying to figure out who is inside the boss, and we have to see the boss. He's like he's like Merza, 
He's like, I have to act quickly. Otherwise, Requiem will slip through my grasp. So, we're kind of looking around. They're trying to figure out how to get him. How to um, figure this out. And we find out that Jorno has the ability to figure out um, who soul is in what, if how many souls are in a body. Yeah. Like they check if, like, and they try to think maybe Mista was the first one to do it because he, you know, his gun broke. He was the closest. He might be in him, or I guess technically in Trish's body. You forget technical, but anyway, Mista. So, and then Mista's like, oh, what if it's you, or what if it's the turtle? Because of how close he was, and then he checks the turtle, and we find that he can actually check who how many souls are in one body. But he has to obviously get close to it. He can't do it from a distance, otherwise that'd be pointless. Where there'd be no suspense in that. So the turtle just pulling it, all good. So then he figures. So then they're trying to figure out how to how is Jordan going to do it without you know figuring without you know getting killed by the boss. So of course Jordan has a plan for that as well. He uses that same trick that Buddha, that uh, Paul and the used, where he bites his finger and just lets the blood drop and just counts the droplets, and if there ends up being more. Boom, then we know the time passed, and that's it. And Polar is like, may God be willing, you might just be able to miss this attack by, by with this trick. So he first decides, you know what, and then he decides, and, goes, and then first he goes to go over to check Mies, because, you know, it's his gun, might as well, let's check him first. And Mies just starts acting hella sus! And I mean, hella sus! But first let me cut, look, first let me go over why I say this is a lot like John Carpenter's The Thing. For you guys that just have not seen the movie. So as you guys may know, John Carpenter's thing was obviously directed by John Carpenter. Right, that was a movie directed right after he did Halloween. Which of course John Carpenter's thing is a remake from a movie from the 50s that appeared a lot in Halloween. The thing from another world that was made back in the 50s. So, and then John Carpenter's thing, and apologies if I didn't get some details, but I haven't seen the movie in like years. I might actually watch it now, with it being on my, I might actually watch it this weekend, or maybe on Monday or something. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. So Mista, so it, how it worked in that way is that for them to figure out who was in, who was the thing in their body, because the thing can like take over, it can is a shapeshifter and it can take over people's bodies, and you really wouldn't be none the wiser unless you actually know where to look. So what they did, and we, and they found out that the thing, that the thing is with fire. So what they would do is take blood samples, put it on top of this little cylinder thing, and they would like burn, and they would have like this little like hole or something that they would fire up with like a flamethrower or something. And because the thing is super fire, and if the blood reacts, they know that that is that that person is indeed the thing. So that's what they do. So in there, so of course, if the, if the blood doesn't react, you're clean. If it does, you're the thing. So that's pretty much what Jorno's doing here. You just check this all, see who is the thing. And if, and that was and I know it was made in like the mid '80s, early to mid '80s when that happened. And if I remember correctly, Part Five was in was in publication during the 90s, so the movie was still relatively new at the time as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if that served as like some inspiration for, um, for, um, uh, a Rocky, because he is a bit of a film guy. So, you know, I don't know for sure, but it's there. I guess the, the comparison's there. But anyway, I don't be talking about the thing. Um, so anyway, so he goes over to check Mista. Mista, like I said, is acting hella sus. He's like, oh, how do we know it's not you, Jordo? And he says, because... And he says that he could have had it in his own body and there nothing was there, so he thought it was someone who thought it was just him. And so he keeps walking closer and closer and closer. Like I said, Mista is acting hella sus for someone that's innocent. Like, hella sus. So, he starts to get closer, but then Mista pulls out the barrette and points it at him. He says, he's like, if, we get, if, you, if you stop this, we'll have to kiss the arrow goodbye. And Mista says, if you, if you move any closer, you can kiss your kneecaps goodbye. So then they kind of stand at each other for a moment. So then they kind of like look at each other for a moment, it's a bit of a standoff. Mista, it looks like Jordan's about to, about to just you know, fly right towards him. Mista tightens his grip on the trigger a little bit about to pull it. And then Butcherati comes in there and tells them both to stop it. We've wasted too much time just. We've wasted too much time bickering. Just do me first. And, he's just, and Jordan kind of looks at him a second and he's just like, hurry, we don't have time! So Jorno goes over there, puts that, puts his like bleeding finger on top of his on top of the front of his other hand, and slowly starts making his way to Uchilati, where we find out. Then, but then once it starts to get really close to him, bam! More droplets are here, so we know the beast that, that the boss is starting to attack. We find the Sea Emperor Crimson. They're about to dodge it, and it's actually coming from Mista or Trisha's body, technically. 
which I thought, which at first I was like, I knew it! It's me, stop! I called it! But then, and so the, it's a trick thing. It was for, so it was for me, stop! Spicy lady! <laughs> And so, but then we found exactly who was actually from Mista's body, not Trish. So I was actually wrong, but why was Mista acting so hella sus then if the man was innocent? I mean, I figure, I mean, I, I mean, when you think about it, Rocket probably did it to make you think it was Mista when it was actually Trish. But when you, but knowing that it wasn't him, why was he acting so sus? You know? I don't know why he was acting so sus for a man that was innocent. I mean, you're not helping your case, fam, but whatever. Whatever the case may be, he grabs, he grabs, and then he ends up grabbing Trish. He's like, my sweet daughter, your stand has finally appeared before me. And so Boots Rocky unleashes Zipper Man, charges right towards him, but then, but then Emperor Crimson, like, digs his fingers into a so spicy ladies or spice girls, whatever, his neck. And he starts like controlling it like a puppet and like where his hand, where Spicy Lady's hand moves, Mista's hand moves. Like, now you are nothing more than a mere puppet to me. And then he got disappeared before reappearing and he's running towards the standard. Butcherati tells Trish to, or Mista I should say, that's, he asks Trish. He tells Mista to go fire off his shots and you know, like his knees are caps or whatever. He's like, you know, a couple bullets on the and, and, and Misa just kind of sitting there for a moment. He's, and Boudreaux's like, take the damn shot, man. A couple of bullet, bullet holes is nothing compared to what he will do. And he's like, yeah, I know. I already shot him. All six of them. And then we find out that this man be pulling that fucking Matrix bullet time type shit and just dodging bullets. You know, because he's using the Emperor Crimson to do it, which I still don't completely understand how the hell that thing works. But hey, whatever. So he's now dodging bullets. And so they charge right after him. And so afterwards, we kind of figure out how Emperor Crimson, or not Emperor Crimson, uh, Silver Chair uh, Requiem works and how it's ability. So he tests out his theory. And he says that he notices that the shadow of the stand is opposite or it goes against to wherever, whatever position, on any position that he that he's looking at him with, regardless of the sun's actual position. So when you, so say, you are, so say Silver Chair is in front of you, you see the shadow is ahead of him. If you are in front of him, the shadow is behind him. If you see him from the side, he appears from the other side. That is the answer. And it actually looked, which I first kind of lost me when I first watched the answer, but when I rewatched the episode and turned the top closed captions on just to really understand what he's saying, then I'm like, oh, that's actually really cool. So I thought that, so I thought that was really cool. He's like, he's like, and then he's just like, your stand, your, your stand is no secret anymore. And if there is, if there is a shadow, there has to be some sort of light behind, some sort of light. And then he's like, the only one that is, is behind me! And he like punches like this little like structure thing, which I guess is supposed to represent his soul. Because he mentions that the shadow is like the silhouette of a, of a soul. So attacking it is like attacking yourself. It's futile or whatever. So he punches this like, sil this like miniature sun thing. I don't even know what the hell to call it. Something behind him. And then Silver Chariot fucking explodes. Yes, you heard me right. He fucking explodes. So he, so he grabs the arrows. He's like, ah. Oh. He has feet. I have won. <laughs> you know, funny brings up fate after all about what happened with Kira. You guys heard with Kira. He always said that he always had luck on his side. Until that ambulance had something else to say. <laughs> anyway. So, at this point they're like, fuck, we're going. So everyone's like scrambling to get to him. But the Jorno just snaps his finger like he's fucking Thanos. And, the, and there's like ants that appear um, all over... The uh, all over the all over the arrow in his hand, which kind of like breaks up the arrow into two, and you know it falls to the ground. So then Mista jumps in there, fires off some shots to de to deflect it uh, back to him. But he fires some some shots at um, Diavolo. Diavolo also blocks those shots, but he misses before they're going to the arrow. But Diavolo comes back and counters their counter, where he falls through, just throws a body in the direction of the bullets, which send the arrow right back towards him. A little too good, actually, if you ask me. <laughs> but, um, so then he grabs the arrow, and so then it seems like he has the arrow again. And they're obviously scrambling to get him back, but then we find out that actually, um, that he actually, like, flicks the arrow in the air towards Butrati and the guys. Because we find out that Trish 
Clutch. Once again, Trish came in clutch. She comes, we find her that she actually like took the bullets or whatever and like turned them into like gum, to like gum or something, which is how she was able to control them for a second. And Trish goes on to how I will not run away and all this other shit as the arrow is coming right towards Misa. Misa's like, oh, I think I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> so he's running to her. So he's like trying to get the arrow and boots her up. <laughs> the owl says, oh, Trish. Oh, how I wish I never brought you into this wretched world. Damn, that's straight savage right there, man. That's a savage. He says, no, I'm angry. And like legit punches right through her. Legit punches right through her. Blood, of course, is everywhere. And then they start flying towards the arrow. And they're like, well, what did you just, what did you say about fate? You just climb, right? Well, this time we'll fly. And then we actually see like a, like Trish kind of like leave her bo- leave Misa's body. It looks like her soul. Maybe she's dead. I hope she isn't. Rocky, you've killed off enough people for this part. Come on now, calm down. Don't kill off everybody in the fucking cast, please, man. Please let some of them live for God's sake. <laughs> but anyway, but then we hear Butcher Ice Cream. Trish. As you can see, right when he gets a hold of you, begin to you see, yeah, Bo- you yeah, see um, Diablo's face and then Bucerati's face, which does look really cool. But yeah, man, that is the end of this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure: Golden Wind. Fantastic episode. I'm loving the series. I w- I still wouldn't go as far as they yeah, I like yeah, this more yeah, than Diamond is Unbreakable. But I would say now we still got a few, and we still got like what three episodes? I think three, four episodes left. So who knows? That might change. But I don't. Say, but this is definitely I would say Wrangler Silver is my second yeah, favorite part of JoJo, yeah. above above part three, but not but not not on that upper S, not right at that level for part four at least to me. But we have still haven't seen the rest of the show. We still got some other parts of the show. I think there was even a one hour special. I think that aired around the end, like for like the last two episodes. I think I'm not sure. I think there was. I think I heard something about there being like a one hour special or something. But anyway, regardless of such. Overall, I'm going to give this episode a 10 out of 10, ladies and gentlemen. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, if you like, leave the description box below. And as always, subscribe for more. See you guys next time. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go get prepared for Game 3 of the Finals.